After a few days in Aqaba, we got on a bus and headed north to Wadi Musa, an extremely touristed town because it holds one of the world's wonders, Petra. So we're going to this little castle called Chibok, and on the way there, the clouds have gotten like, it's gotten overcast, and I mean, we haven't seen overcast like this the entire month we've been in the Middle East. So um, this is peculiar, and you can't really see it anymore, but way back here, there was a tornado, a huge tornado, like off in the distance. And I think that's what it was. I mean, it really, really looked like it. I'm not sure if there's some other weather formation that can look like a tornado in this part of the world, but it really, really looked like a tornado. And here are many goats. <laughs> hey, look at those camels. That's what it's like to drive past random camels. <laughs> So this is pretty amazing looking. The um, scenery here is pretty great. And these are like little houses down here, like built into the wall. It's like a little village. This is the castle that we're going up to. We'll be checking that out in a moment. The Jordanian mountain ranges are beautiful. It's just, it doesn't even seem like we're on planet Earth anymore. Like all the lines that are on here and then just the little shrubs like trying to grab life. <laughs> it's really incredible looking. I think the way the cloud cover is making the shadowing is really, really dramatic as well. It looks really cool. Yeah. And that's not so, I mean, no clouds for a month and all of a sudden clouds. Yes, we have seen <laughs> clouds again. Welcome clouds. <laughs> all right, here's the castle, let's go. This is the castle, we're on our way. <laughs> so I've kind of climbed up to the top of the castle and here's the best view you can get. The castle is uh, not super impressive. I would definitely say that the landscape surrounding it is much more intensely impressive than the castle itself. Although there is a tunnel here that's supposed to be terrifying and we're gonna end up trying to find that. Um, but the scenery is just stunning. We were kind of upset at the amount of money that we were paying to get out here, but starting to feel like it was completely worth it. <laughs> so at this castle, there's apparently a cave that you can go down to and it's supposed to be pretty spooky. So we're going in and this is what it looks like. So, so far, pretty spooky. Oh my. <laughs> really spooky. So, this is not a camera situation. I'm going to have to kill this in a second because I can't see very well. We've left our guide, a guy. He's, he was supposed to be our taxi driver, but then he wanted to follow us around. And we kind of ditched him. Yeah, so it is really spooky down here, like, <laughs> shut off your flashlight. Oh, well, I can't really shut the light off to this, so that doesn't help. Anyways, yeah, um, it's really slippery because it's really dusty, and you very much feel like you're in an Indiana Jones movie or something. It's really weird, <laughs> and I'm not sure if this is going to come out anywhere, so that's all real exciting. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, like, this is freaky, freaky, a long way down in the earth. It just keeps going. We have our driver waiting for us. He's probably furious. Whatever. Yeah. If we didn't have that guy waiting for us, <laughs> I would say keep going, but it just goes and goes and goes. Oh my god. I'm trying to get a good shot of that. That's amazing looking. I mean, wow. I don't know how we're going to get back out. <laughs> it's a long way up. All right, so there's the 
castle that we went to and uh, down over here is a little door where the tunnel comes out. I don't know if you'll ever be able to see it, but it's the best I can do. <laughs> So coming to Petra, we kind of expected to come to a very, like, just a small tourist town around Petra. And uh, this is actually called Wadi Musa. And it's a pretty big, industrial kind of looking town. I mean, it's nothing like what I expected this area to look like. We are two kilometers away from Petra. And it's just a sprawling little suburb here. And this is the view from our roof of uh, the place that we're staying, so pretty gorgeous. Gonna watch the sunset here and uh, relax for a little while. Yeah, that's a pony. <laughs> we're at Petra right now, and apparently your ticket gets you a pony ride in. So that's what I'm doing right now. And this is uh, my first pony ride of the entire trip. <laughs> it's going pretty good. My pony kind of doesn't seem super happy, but that's all right. They told me my pony's name is Katie. I don't know how I feel about that. Not even in yet, and you can already see some of the architecture. It's gonna be so Indiana Jones out here today. That's awesome. I got shook down by the uh, the horse escort. I went to give him a half dinar, which is really like 75 cents American. And uh, he told me that's nothing here. He shook me down so that I'd give him two dinars. I did it, but in retrospect, nothing is nothing. Half a dinar is actually something. <laughs> You can't drive right into Petra. You first have to slither down the Sikh, a narrow, nearly mile-long winding path. At no point is the Sikh more than 10 feet wide, and the colossal walls reach as high as 300 feet at some points. The walk is intimidating and enchanting at the same time. This canyon makes you feel like an ant. <laughs> For us, Petra had been a long time coming. We were both excited, and the walk through the Sikh felt like it took an eternity. But no amount of walking matters once you catch a glimpse of the jaw-dropping treasury. Like the other buildings and tombs at Petra, the treasury was meticulously carved by hand. This building in particular was crafted around 100 BC. The treasury is not the first building that you view, but it is the most stunning, because the walls of the Sikh protect it from wind, rain, and sunlight. It is not known the purpose of the treasury, but legends speak of bandits or possibly Egyptian pharaohs stashing their bounty here. Welcome to Petra. Indiana Jones was here. Just want to put that out there. Him and his ponies and all that good stuff riding around right here in front of Petra. It's a stunning building. And along with every good tourist attraction comes the garbage. At least it's not in the picture, and that's amazing. Oh. And then there's always the camels. Let's see how much a camel I can get you. Before somebody yells at me. A little history. The Nabataeans settled Petra in 7000 BC. The people and the area prospered for centuries through the trade of frankincense, myrrh, and spices. They displayed their success by creating hundreds of beautifully carved sandstone buildings throughout their city. Petra was a hub until a devastating earthquake in 363 AD, and eventually trade and routes went beyond land. By the 7th century, Petra was deserted, leaving truly incredible architecture behind. Who put that donkey up there on that cliff?
Hmm. Was it him? Right now we're climbing up to the top of this ridge up here. At least I think that's where we're going. We're just following a staircase. And we're in kind of a little canyon over here. And look at the colors. It's, it's pretty ridiculous. Like here you've got a lot of oranges and whites and yellows and reds, but we've actually seen blue and purple and uh, green and some other colors that I won't explain. But um, yeah, this is very colorful and I kind of didn't expect that. I expected a lot of orange and maybe red, but other colors I wasn't expecting. Let's go find that donkey. It's really difficult to take all of this in. Like, it just seems kind of fake. It's so amazing looking. It seems just huge. Um, it's like a painting or something, you know? I don't have a whole lot of commentary here. It's windy, though. Ooh. Oh, hello. So that cliff that I pointed to um, in an earlier video that's what we're standing on right now. And the view is pretty spectacular. Um, if I am correct, we live over in this little area right here. So you've seen a video of that going over to Petra and from Petra going over to that. <laughs> All the stacks are a lot like um, things we've seen in Korea. So Petra itself is actually a fairly large complex and it's like a city essentially, like a large city that has been built into all these um, limestone walls, or no, I'm, I'm sorry, sandstone walls. And this is called the garden something or other. And the reason it's called that is because all of this is like, for lack of a better word, an aqueduct system. And you see this hole here, water used to come out of that and they'd be able to plug it and it would fill these pools up and they would be able to allow all of the water to come down through here and go out and fill this area, and apparently this used to be a garden. And I'm not really sure, you can see where, more where water would go. I'm not really sure where all the water went. Um, I know that a earthquake is what made everybody move out of this region, and maybe that destroyed like a spring or something, but um, at some point <laughs> everything dried up, <laughs> and now it's abandoned. But uh, you can see like it was actually a pretty advanced civilization, the fact that they had they were moving water around and um, building obviously these giant Roman looking, Greek looking columns and things like that. And when you go inside, there's a crack broken in the middle in the back of the wall and you can see out over the rest of the little town. And you can see more buildings and pillars and stuff out there and we are headed out there in just a moment. Okay, so this crack up here, this is what I just stuck the camera out of. And you can see we're standing down there, and I mean, like, look at that. How amazing is that? It's just like out here in a valley. It's really amazing. And then this is supposed to be some sort of, like, um, funerally. It's a, a building they would use for funerals or something to do with the dead. And it's the only building that actually has any carvings on the insides, apparently, in all of Petra, or according to the sign. So let's come in and take a look. And again, I mean, just these columns and stuff, it's very, very cool. And keep in mind, I think the civilization is about 2,000 years old. So this stuff is pretty, pretty old. And just the colors, I mean, the, the, mo the, the most striking thing about this entire place, aside from the fact that human beings carved all this out, is the colors of the walls. And, like, you can just see that it's compressed sand, like, over time, that this is just turned, like, regular desert sand and just so much weight is pushed down on it that it's compressed into this thick rock. Or that's what I think, I'm no geologist, just <laughs> assume that's what happened. But uh, just the, the bands of color, look at this. It's amazing. And the current sand is very loose. When you see how easily that the walls can break away here, it makes an understanding why they took the time to carve into them and build cities into it. it. Probably wasn't all that difficult. I'm not trying to downplay their amazingness. It's just, this is a pretty primal place for it. it just peels away.
So a lot of the buildings or sculptures in the walls that happen to be rooms, like this, they are actually tombs. And this wasn't excavated until 2003. And keep in mind, this was made about 2,000 years ago. So it sat dormant for a while. And what it was, is you can see these are tombs. Like, people were buried here. And over the years, apparently, grave robbers had come and stolen a majority of the stuff that was inside. But, I mean, there's 14, 14 tombs or graves that some of them look like they may have had multiple people in them. It's kind of spooky. And the walls are different in here. It's like, it's like a black... It's definitely, they, they definitely put it there. I don't think it's turds. <laughs> Not on the ceiling. Turds don't, turds don't go up. <laughs> so there's this massive, massive cliff and Katie is going to jump off of it. Look at that. That is almost four feet. <laughs> Ready? Come on. Wow. How, did, how high did you get to count to while you were falling? Seven, eight? Maybe even two. <laughs> it's kind of spooky, huh? You can see the color patterns and stuff. Well, not really even patterns, color randomnesses. And look at this lizard. He is pretty big. He's gonna run. He's gone. Let's see if we can find him on the inside. No dragons be here. I'm really glad I kind of came into this not knowing what to expect because it makes it much more overwhelming to see how much there actually is. There is. I, I mean, I knew the treasury existed and I knew there were some other things, but I didn't realize it. I mean, look at this. There's this entrance, 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 entrance. Like, look how many places have been lived in or used as some sort of like human abode and the details and the age and the the, the whole the, the grandiosqueness of the entire thing is just really really uh stunning grandiose. grandiose this is somewhat flintstones-esque this is a pretty striking example of the colors that the sand has formed like you can see it's almost like a zebra but a red and white zebra as you get closer you can see there's actually more colors than just the red and the white let's see like you can see this band of yellow this is coming through it it's like you're on another planet I'm sure it's probably, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's getting boring hearing me say this, but look at this. Look at all the color. So we are headed over this direction, and you can see this is like another heavily populated area. Jesus. One of my best, uh, best things about coming to things like this is when you can actually get away from things and just kind of climb around and actually be a part of what you're looking at rather than just looking at it. And nobody is up where we're at. And we haven't really seen except for this valley of people that we've just come across. We haven't seen anybody in a while. So we've just kind of been like climbing around and climbing on the rocks and stuff. It makes it a lot more fun than just going and, you know, gawking at something and just sitting there that you can't touch. We can't get down, can we? Now, come on, don't be a wimp. You're on. No problem, babe. You did make that look really easy, but you're also very long. This amphitheater was refurbished by the Romans after they annexed the region around 100 AD. The seating seats 8,500 people, and everything besides the extreme ends was carved completely out of a mountain that was there. 
previous to an amphitheater being there, there were tombs in place. And now you can see these black holes in the walls where the tombs had been removed, but the holes hadn't been refilled. So at one point there were tombs there. Now there's an amphitheater. It's kind of creepy. We spotted another lizard. And I know that me moving closer is going to make him run away. He's got to be at least the size of my forearm, a foot long. He seems to be dancing. He definitely is aware of our presence. <laughs> yeah. So we came over here and we've been playing around in the little holes and nooks and crannies here. In this little room right here, you can see an officer setting up his, uh, his nap time kit. And we've been told that uh, we, we were just up in that nook, like sitting there in the shade, watching the people walk by. It was really nice. And uh, the police came up there and told us that we were not allowed to stay up there because apparently you're not allowed to be in that room during nap time. They are having a siesta and taking a snooze. <laughs> we are in what's called the Urn Temple. And look at the ceiling. Like, it's just getting more and more absurd as to how much color they can find in a stone. Like, are you serious? It looks like a, a painting of some sort. So after a massive hike through all these hills and everything, we have gotten to the point where we are above the treasury. And this is not some place that very many people are coming. So, um, special view. It's pretty awesome. A bunch of clouds have rolled in and it's making all the mountains look pretty spooky. Okay, so we were up here and then we walked over up here and we were looking down at the treasury from there. So it's a really far hike up there and you have to go a long way. You can't just go straight. You have to hike way out around everything. It was really, really amazing though. So a lot of the rocks have changed color essentially as the sun goes down. Obviously the light is just showing different colors more vibrantly. But um, again, this is like really like a watercolor. Something you don't see from an Indiana Jones movie is that this exists right in front of the treasury. Like, there's a sub-basement. And we're on our way out. And there is the valley, or Sik, or Sook, or whatever it's called. It's not a valley. Valleys are made with water. This was made because an earthquake pulled this apart. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> Making love to the camera.